find a steep rock-edged glen, and you just might find the striking little fern called rock cap polypody in residence on rocks above a rushing stream, though it'll grow on hilltop boulders, too. Thoreau was intrigued by it, writing that it reminded him of an oriental character. The evergreen polypodies are a tough lot to pin down taxonomically. They hybridize and mix. Whatever the mix, the resulting colonies stand out. They're especially dramatic in their big rock habitats, often demonstrating that they need very little soil to thrive. In fact, they can sometimes even be facultative epiphytes, growing high up in trees. Let's look at one close up, here growing in a thin layer of moss. Imagine the blade of the fern as a whole leaf, and taking the leaf and making single cuts on both sides of the rachis, or midrib. That's why the fern is referred to as once cut. The alternating leaflets give a sense of zigzagging, and the cut is referred to as panatophid, since it doesn't quite hit the rachis. Compare this to the once cut pinnate Christmas fern with leaflets on short stalks. Let's look at how it does spores, which vary in appearance by age. Here's a saurus, a group of sporangia. They look like little baseballs, separated by tiny protective hairs or periphyses, like tiny toy jacks when viewed under the microscope. To get the spores on their way, that baseball stitch part, the annulus, has water-filled cells that gradually dry out and extend outwards, pulling the sporangium apart. The extended annulus swings down, spores loaded. The water in the cells cavitates, air bubbles form, releasing the pressure, pitching it quickly upwards, and ejecting the tiny spores into the air at very high speed, about 10 meters per second. Here's an expended saurus with sprung annually. Ferns like polypodium are the stuff of myths and folklore, often with healing or spiritual or magical powers. An old Welsh notion that Shakespeare repeats is that a so-called fern seed will make the bearer invisible. I get a flash of that same timeless magic. Ferns, rocks, and water make sublime art that makes you feel like you've interrupted something old. And there is a sense of invisibility walking in such an illustrated woods.